So I think right now I'm live. I just had a massive screw up with the previous live stream that I tried to put up. Yeah, here we go. We are live. We are live. I can't see chat though. Hang on. Okay, let me set some things up. Let me get my chat already. And we got two people watching now. This is crazy because on the other stream, we have like 140 people waiting for this. So let me, hey, 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 I can see you. Fantastic. But for some reason, this isn't working. Okay, we got people here. We got people here. Hello, folks. Hell yes. All right, let me set th some things up. I've got chat. Go on, please say chat is working. Hello from Russia. Yes. Okay, I can see you guys. All right, everyone who's here, you need to go back to the other stream link and like tell everyone to get in here because this is where it's happening. I'm just going to do this right now. Oh my gosh, you, there's so many folks here. This is awesome. Okie dokie. We have, where's the other live stream? Where's the one I put together? Oh my God, you're telling me. Live stream is so painful. Okay, live, 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 live. Yeah, here we go. Okay, this is the old one. So you guys can't see what's going on. Stream broke, new link here. Bam. Whoa, so many of you. Oh, this is epic. This is epic. Got some folks from America, from India. Some guys excited about TS Reset. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it too. Let me just pin this. Put it where basically anyone can find it. Yeah, old stream is broken. New stream should be fine though. Stream is broken. Go here. Whoa, Denmark. Oh my Christ. Okay, cool. Oof. Saudi Arabia, Colombia, Venezuela, Sweden, Argentina, Austria, Portugal and Spain. How many of you are there in this stream? This is ridiculous. Listen, I'm so grateful that you folks have come because I don't stream very often, actually. And when I stream, I like to make it a big event. And I'm so excited that you guys are all following along. We are going to be publishing a NPM package from beginning to end. So like, I don't even have a Git repo set up right now. I'm gonna need your help. I'm gonna need help writing a readme. I'm gonna need help like writing some code, contributing tests. Bulgaria, Indiana, Brazil, Africa, Dresden, oh, Norway, Serbia. Oh my Christ, so many of you. This is epic. This is epic. There must be more than 57 in here. Nigeria, hey Zach. Oh my, wow, this is crazy. And we're going to try and do it in 90 minutes. Now, publishing a package to NPM, it's like a complicated process. There's going to be a lot of steps we need to go through. I'm going to be in the tank for a lot of this. You guys need to be asking me questions, bouncing ideas off. And when the GitHub repo goes up, we're going to need to be going crazy for this. Yeah, who's excited? Jotso, Johannes, I didn't realize you were from England. Germany, Brazil, Nigeria. Epic. Oh, thank you. Mugetsu, I really appreciate it. 96, 78 people, Prague, the Unfiltered Build podcast, awesome. Yeah, I mean, I've been thinking about doing podcasting. Like, podcasting is a really cool space to get into, and I, I used to have my own podcast when I was an accent teacher, actually, funnily enough. Um, I used to do a lot of this stuff when I was an accent teacher. So, are we ready? Let's take a look at kind of the splits here, because it wouldn't be a stream, like, wouldn't be a proper speed run without splits. I'm thinking that I'm going to run this timer and what this timer is going to do is it's basically going to like tick down to 90 minutes or up and if 90 minutes are up and we haven't done all of these steps then we're going to delete the repo all the code's going to be gone we have our first CI run that's our first step so if we can get github actions working and like our CI is checking and it's type checking correctly then we're good we then need to publish 0.01 to npm and after that we need to build out the API. So I'm gonna publish like a 0.01 just to make sure that NPM checking is all set up. And then we need to get a test passing. Then we need to write, write the readme. Then we need to get 1.0.0 published, all in 90 minutes. I am uh, real nervous about this because it's a lot of work. I've got to entertain you guys. I've got to make sure that this stream doesn't just go off the rails and I've got to convince you that I'm a good enough TypeScript developer that you should buy my 
course, you know, total TypeScript. So there's a lot on the line for me. So I will need your help. Um, I think we're going to start it off in like about eight minutes. But for now, uh, let's just do a Q&A. Yesterday, I did a really interesting, well, actually, it was on Sunday. On Sunday night, I thought to myself, okay, like there are some things that annoy me about TypeScript, several things. And what I decided to do was I decided to fix those things. Because, you know, I'm like full time on TypeScript now. And so if I can make kind of anything that's like, if I can make TypeScript better, then that benefits me as well. And so what I did was I decided to release something and it's, it's an NPM package actually. And the NPM package is called total TypeScript. Um, let me dig it out for you and you should be able to see what I'm doing here. It's called total TypeScript and TS reset. Now what this does is basically there's tons and tons of sort of like horrible things with TypeScript. I really hate any's in my code, uh, like JSON pass and the fact that fetch.json returns any is like really painful to me because these things should be sort of like unknown here. But I decided what I can do is you can just like import this file here, import this import, total TypeScript TS reset. And now JSON pass returns unknown. Now fetch.json returns unknown. And now filter boolean gets smarter. Now dot includes gets smarter as well. So I'm super, I'm super excited to like release this and like have this in different people's projects. It's already got like, I don't know how many stars on, yeah, like 1.7K stars. You see, yeah, I think TS Reset is an awesome project. Yeah, hype from Twitter is not from this world. Yes, that's true. Is this pre-recorded? No, man, I'm, I'm just chatting. I'm, 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 I'm right here right now. Yeah, okay, general TS question, launch it, man. Oh, you've already purchased my course? Thank you, hello, Alvis. I really appreciate that. Give me questions then, folks. So I'm here. I'm here for like six more minutes. And then we got to get into it because we got to do the 90 minute speed run. We've got to power out this TS library. And then we got to somehow wrap it up in a nice bow. And then it's pancake day in the UK. 185? 185 of you are here? That's crazy. This is like way more than I've ever had on any of my streams before. Epic. How's your Irish accent these days? Willow Reagan, what's up, man? How's it going? Willow Reagan is uh, my old boss, actually. He is, I think, one of the uh, best bosses I ever had. He's an epic dude. So everyone say hello to Will. Will's epic. Mm. What are my thoughts on Hotscript? Hotscript, if you don't know, Hotscript is a library that came out from Gabriel Vergniaud, who's the guy who created TS Pattern. And it does some really cool things. It builds on top of um, a pattern called higher order types. And it lets you basically use functional programming to compose different types together. It's extremely powerful. I was thinking about doing a video on it, actually. Do you use interfaces on class constructor arguments? I have a vendor who does that and it frustrates the linter because interface doesn't match the actual class. Would need some TypeScript stuff there. Recommended dev books. That's interesting. I didn't like, I don't read a lot of dev books. Do I still have? Yeah, I've still got this. Check this out. Oh. Look at that. Oh wait, you can't see. Let me flip. Uh, transform. Uh, flip horizontal. There you go. PHP. I was a PHP developer before I was a JavaScript developer. Um, didn't do it for very long. Did it for about five months. And then the company I was with sort of collapsed. But I didn't mind PHP. I sort of, it was pretty similar to JavaScript in the kind of untyped. It's pretty messy, really, let you do some really weird stuff. But it was kind of fun to mess about with. Hang on, let me transform back. But yeah, I was a PHP developer first. Um, so I don't know, I when I came into JavaScript, the whole system was moving too fast. Like, I didn't really trust that a book on React was going to be like up to date because React was moving so quickly at the time. Not really sure how to buy my course. My course is not out yet. My course is releasing in like maybe two weeks or something. We are really, really getting close now. Um, the, like I did my last bit of filming for the course uh, last week. I did an, um, we're gonna be shipping some like interviews with the course too. So I've been interviewing Alex from TRPC. 
uh, Colin from Zod. Um, I interviewed the program manager for TypeScript, Daniel Rosenwasser, yesterday, who's a lovely, lovely dude. Um, so yeah, like we're we're close now. We are really, really close. You like my voice? Oh, thank you. Looking awesome. Oh, thank you. Lamp is the number one stack. I don't know. There are probably stacks before that. I don't know if the COBOL stack is it. What are your thoughts on React or general trend uh, towards moving being like PHP? That's a really good one. So for those who don't know, I was employed by Vercel last year. And Vercel is a company that makes Next.js. And Next.js now is sort of like, or Vercel is sort of owning more and more of the React team. They're starting to employ more members of the React team. 217, crazy. Um, and... I, while I was there, they launched server components. Like that was part of the deal at Next 13. And I was at the conference where they announced them. And I think that it's pretty cool. I don't know if React server components are like the perfect paradigm. I haven't really used them yet. Uh, I wasn't part of the team that was sort of launching them, so I didn't have uh, anything like that. I do have a Discord, mattpocock.com forward slash Discord. Someone put the link in the chat. Um, yeah, and so like... I'm not sure yet. I'm a, I'm a React developer. I've been a React developer for longer than I've been a TypeScript developer. So enums will be usable. Enums are fine. I mean, they're not great. I don't like them. I prefer as const. Enums, meh. Is it good for Svelte to be acquired by Vercel? Yes. It's great. Um, it's good. Like, Vercel wants uh, a diverse ecosystem. And I, I think Vercel have their heads screwed on right. Oh, my new subscriber. Okay. That was a quick fire round. Any more, any more, any more? Because otherwise we should probably start this speed run. We're nearly there. Mm. Oh my gosh. How many now? How many now? I can't see the number. I'm not going to look at the number. I want comments in package.json. Mm. Uh, I haven't seen that uh, Create React app discussion, but... Create React app is is dead. I never use it. I never recommend it. Vite is, is superior. Yep, Union Terms are better than Enums. What is the library that we're going to build? Okay, so I have an idea for this. I need to find this tweet. Maybe one of you can find this for me. I released a library called um, Zod Fetch. And what Zod Fetch does is, let me see if I can dig this out. So, here. Um, let's look at this Zod Fetch. Now, what Zod Fetch does is it gives you a really, really small wrapper for just like integrating with Zod. And it means that you can basically get type safe access to remote um, APIs. So here, for instance, we have a result, which is a way to fetch with Zod, shape, the data to, shape you want your data to be in, and then the result is gonna be typed as hello string. Really, really useful. And it got me thinking that I think we can do other stuff with Zod. Zod sort of is an untapped area for sort of building out really cool complex APIs. Um, so, Zod map poke oh, is probably the thing. Branded opaque types. Oh god, I talk about Zod quite a lot, don't I? Latest. Uh, this isn't going to go well. But the basic idea I had for this would be that you'd be able to basically use Zod in like a WebSocket. Because what you can do with Zod is you can say, okay, I want to validate things coming in and you can create schemas for that. So I've done lots and lots of work where I've wanted like a type safe message bus. And I've talked to my pal, Eric Rasmussen, who works on Redux form and, and other stuff too. React Final Form works on centered or worked on centered. And he's talked about that as well. They like type safe and runtime safe message passing between different localities and different environments is super important and really underserved. So I want to build something about that. Can't use generics and then generate Zod validation from it instead of passing a Zod object. You've got two choices. You can either create the generics or infer the generics from the Zod schema. So go from runtime to type, which is easy and safe and really nice, but you can't go from type to runtime. You can't easily make runtime structures out of types. Always write usage code first. Yes, I think we should start with that. Actually, we should start with that. Um, Grok D is a really interesting Zod implementation for Sanity. Ooh, I've used Sanity before. Total TypeScript uses Sanity. Sanity is epic. Hello, hello. Uh, Neil before Zod. I don't actually like, I want to do an impression of that, but I don't know the reference well enough. 
Okay, we need to start, don't we? Um, Zod for me that it can generate the type. Type should generate the guard function instead. Nah, Zod's like more expressive than TypeScript can be. So. <sighs> oh. I think we might be ready to start. Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? 227. Good lord. Good lord. Yep, TS course is coming out as planned. Prices are on the website. Mm. I've got my water. I've got my tea. My voice is starting to go already. It's been a lot of talking for 17 minutes. Zod fetch doesn't let you define the shape of the parameters, just the data returned. No, but it's clever. I'll show you. I use my um, I have screenshots of code. I use carbon. Are we ready, kids? Are we ready? Um, okay. Because the moment I push this button, the second I push this button, I'm going to need to start working. A live split timer. I, Because does live split work on Mac? I couldn't get it working on Mac. Two, three, seven. It's going to be a release in about two weeks. The moment I push this button, we're going to need to start kicking into gear. We're going to need to start creating stuff. And the ammo! We're going to need to get coding. And ah, I'm a lazy boy. I'm a lazy boy. Congenitally lazy. I'm not sure if I can be bothered to do this yet. Five, four, three, two, let's go. Okay, so I need to, first of all, create, um, I'm gonna CD into, I have a thing called CD repos TS. Let me bump this up so you guys can see this. Uh, LS, bunch of stuff in here. Let's um, make a new directory. And I'm gonna call this Zod message bus for now. Uh, we can argue about the name later, I think. So Zod, uh, Message bus. There we go. Okay, we got a code instance. This is good. Uh, I'm gonna like detoggle my VS Code settings. So I actually like. Oh no, my my like GitHub Copilot isn't quite working as well, which is sort of sucks. But oh well, we'll have to just carry on. So inside here, I can do. I've got a, like a special CLI that I use called Matt Matt init pnpm, and this is gonna create a bunch of stuff for me. So it's gonna create a package.json. It's gonna initialize Git. And uh, oh god, we got so much to do. Okay. So, um, inside here, we have a source index.ts. We have some gitignore stuff. I'm going to add this to this while we're here. We're going to need to, what's the first thing I need to do? Get the first CI run. Good lord. Okay, so much to do before then. Um, we're using pnpm because pnpm is the goat, goat, goat. Shouldn't we spend 60 minutes using a name? You guys can choose a name. I think Zod Message Bus is good. I'm going to show you some usage APIs once we've got our first CI, CI run done. I'm going to add pmpm add d ts up. ts up is going to be doing the building for us. And it's going to make sure that we can support CJS and ESM as well. So we've got uh, ts up. We are going to add a build script. Build is going to go ts up. Oh, it's still working. Fantastic. Source index.ts format CGS ESM dot tds. That's good. Now we could run pmpm run build. pmpm run build. That should stick it in dist. Okay, good, 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 good. No copilot? Co no. I'm on it, mate. I've got copilot. Thank. Wait, should I turn copilot off? I don't have time. We got our dist. Now, dist, these are the files that are actually going to be shipped out to the world here. So, what I can do is I can go index.ts, I can export const hello, and go like this. And oh, yeah, we've got a GitHub repo, so I should post this, right? So, initial commit, boom. Publish branch, GitHub public repository. We have a git repo. I'm going to open it on GitHub. Let's do it. You're the copilot. Absolutely. There you go. So we have Zod message bus. We are live. We have a repo. So get star in that repo. And I'm going to need some PRs in basically as soon as we can. But don't derail me with those PRs. Don't listen. Don't PR nonsense. Don't make me review your stupid PRs. If you make me review your stupid PRs, we're going to lose this speed run. What time is it? How long have we got left? How long? How long? How long? Okay, wow. So we can build now and we're going to get the build output. 
So the build output is going to be, yeah, it's kind of messy for CGS, but you can see that we have hello there, which is good. And we have hello here too. Nice. Let's console log hello inside here just to check that it's doing something. And then we can start putting together a CI. I need to go into inside my TS config and I need to check no emit to true. The reason I'm doing that is because blah, 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 no emit true. The reason I'm doing that is so that I can basically add a lint script here, lint and then uh, not yes, lint source, just TSC. And now when I run um, pnpm lint, I saw the person in the comments who said I don't need to run run, you're right, I can now get type checking on my repo. So if I say console.lg inside here, pnpm lint, bam. Okay, good, it's giving me errors here. Now this is gonna be important because when I release it out to the wild, I don't want to have random errors sort of like messing it in. So yeah, repository link in YouTube chat. It is uh, Zod message bus, Zod message bus. Maybe I should, ah, I don't have time. Okay. <laughs> So first CI run, first CI run. For a CI run, we need tests. Okay, so we're going to say pmpn add d vtest. Vtest is a banging, it's such a good test runner. It's so good. We're gonna need to uh, run some like uh, unit tests, index.test.ts and vtest gives us a way to do it. So we can say describe or not from no test, import from vtest, nice, describe. And we'll say describe whatever. And we're going to say it, that comes from vtest as well, um, should pass CI. Oh, thank you, GitHub Copilot. Thank you. Okay, cool. We've got our first running test. Oh, yeah, I need to. I'm going to add two scripts here. I'm going to add a dev script, which is going to run vtest. And then I'm going to go test, which is going to go for vtest run. What this does is if I run pnpm dev, now it's going to basically just run vtest on a watch mode. But if I run pnpm uh, test, then it's going to basically run it and then quit out at the end, which is good. And if I fail that test, expect one to be two, then it's going to fail my CI2. How is this different to TRPC? How is what different to TRPC? PMPM autocomplete? I'm not getting PMPM autocomplete either. Um, probably, I don't know, I don't know. 259, jeez, folks. Okay, what's next? GitHub uh, workflows. I'm gonna cheat here. I'm gonna say, um, what's the most recent thing? Oh yeah, let's just do TS reset. I'm going to just like pan over to the TS reset um, thing over here to the repo and I'm going to look at our main where is what you're doing I'm going to look at main.yml because this is the basically this is the setup I like to use for basically github actions github actions are going to be our CI here so let's go for dot github and workflows and then we're going to have main.yml copy and paste that in now it's basically going to do a few steps it's going to check out the repo it's going to set up pnpm, it's going to set up node, then it's going to install pnpm from a frozen lock file, so install all our packages, then it's going to run a script called CI. So let's, wait, is that my phone ringing? Specsavers. It's bloody Specsavers. CI. And I'm going to make it go pnpm run, um, we need to run lint and test and build. Nice. Because the tests themselves, they just run on the source file, so they don't run on the broadcast. Exactly. This is how you code. Copy an existing example. I'm too lazy. I'm too lazy to figure out all this YAML stuff. YAML. Um, <sighs> any more steps? Any more steps? I don't think so. So pmpm runs CI. Let me check that again. CI, that's going to run there. That's good. The tests are going to pass. I need to make sure they pass. Then index.ts, there's no errors there, so lint is going to pass. Let's run pmpm run ci, and that's going to run all of our bits together. This is good, but we can make it run faster using turbo repo if we really wanted to, but I'm not sure I do want to. Let's freaking go. Okay. I'm not sponsored by GitHub, by the way. I just really like GitHub Actions. It's super easy. Um, CI. So now what we can do is we can tab over to the repo itself. Where is it? Uh, Zod message bus, here it is. And we can take a look at these actions. And as soon as this CI passes, you can see a CI is now running, which is great. Okay, come on, hosted runner. Come on, line. Setting up job. Setting up node. 
install frozen lock file. This is good. Nice, fast, really fast. PMPM run CI, TSC, passed, VTest run, passed. Build, passed. Post run. Come on, what are you cleaning up? All right, call it. Eight minutes, 20. Ooh, eight minutes, 20. Time for a glass of water. Come on. Okay. Explorer is on the right. Yeah. Explorer is on the right. It's always on the right for me. Time is still ticking. But I'm just taking a moment. That was intense. Eight minutes 20 to deploy a, like, get everything working, get the CI stuff done. That's good. Zod bus is coming. Wait. No, I don't want to get whatever the equivalent is. Okay. Next step. is 0.01 .01 published. Okay, this means I need to go to NPM. I need to uh, get some stuff working. So in order to get this working on NPM, I'm gonna need to do a few things. I'm gonna need to go into the package.json here. Oh, I'm in the wrong thing. Um, I'm gonna need to change this main index.js because I need to add a dist file, which is gonna to point to index.ts. So I need this to be dist index.js then module is going to be index.mjs and types is going to point here. That's good. Um, PNPM is an equivalent to NPM, but it's much faster because it does a lot of really, really smart caching. PNPM is what I use and it's what I'm going to use on this speed run because it installs things way faster. If I was using NPM, I might not make the 90 minutes. So now we're good. Now we need to make a release plan and this release plan. Oh yeah. I'm going to release this under total TypeScript Zod message bus, I think. Um, yeah, PNPM is just faster. Keyboard mashing sounds. Um, yeah, it, it basically is like NPM, but better. And yeah, I'm going to do this so that no one can scalp that package name out from under me because when I was building TS Reset, someone actually came along and like nabbed TS Reset while I was building it out, which was extremely frustrating. Yeah, it's it's so much faster. It's much faster on CI, it's faster, it's just so much faster. The reason it's fast, I could explain why it's fast, is because it basically, instead of installing node modules in node modules, it installs them in a global cache on your system. And then what it does is it hard links them down to node modules. That means that whenever you install something that you have installed before, it doesn't need to download anything. It just pulls it from the cache. It's incredibly quick. Yep. <clears throat> yep. TSUP creates the .d.ts files. It creates the .mjs files and it's powered by ESBuild. Oh yeah, 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 you're right. I need to change it to, oh, my face. There we go. Um, 0 0.01. Uh, okay, uh, I need to look at NPM now. So on NPM, what I need to do is I need to create an access token. So I will do that, but I'm going to like obscure most of it. So we need to go into access tokens and let me just check that there's nothing scary here. Access tokens, Zonfetch token, yeah, okay, I think I'm going to generate a new token. And what I'm going to do with this token is I need to go into GitHub, into Zod message bus. I need to go into settings. I need to go into actions. No, not actions. Environments. No, not environments. No, it is actions, I think. And I'm going to um, runners. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Secrets. Secrets is what I'm looking for. Secrets. Deploy key, secrets, and variables. Okay. Inside actions, I need to add basically a secret, which is going to be NPM. So it's going to be, no, not, not environment. Environment secrets. There are no secrets from this repository. New, new repository secret. My God. NPM token. So I need to add an NPM token that I'm going to get from NPM. I'm going to do that right now. Uh, I'm creating a new access token. I'm just going to vaguely talk you through it. Oh my God. I've got to enter my one-time pa password, OTP. <laughs> Uh, 694. No, why am I telling you this? I shouldn't be telling you that. Okay, okay. Let's provide a unique name for it. Uh, uh, 
Mm, uh, uh, uh. Yep, yeah, PNPM is better than Yarn for sure. Um, for God's sake. Okay, cool. I've got my token. Stick it in here. Add the secret. <sighs> okay, and we're good to go. And what you can see now, whoops. Yeah, there we are. Is we've now got a repository secret which is going to be npm token. Yeah, this is recorded. This is recorded. Um, 302. Good lord. Wait, what's this? You got a pull request? What did you change? You added love you .ts? This isn't even valid TypeScript. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, you can't approve these changes. No. I'm not going to, no, close. How dare you? No. These are not Blu-ray glasses. These are Specsavers glasses, which is why Specsavers was texting me earlier. Um, oh, for God's sake, it's 14 minutes in. Okay, we need to ship. <sighs> okay, where the hell am I going? Zod Meshes Bus. Okay, we've got this build working. We need to add something called change sets. So I'm going to add PM, PM, add change sets CLI, add it as a dev dependency. Haven't accidentally added anything as a non dev dependency. No, good. If I added anything as a proper dependency, then that would mean like it would get bundled with the application that or the library that gets sent out, which is not good. So we need to say change set CLI. Now I'm going to say PM, PM change set init. That's going to initialize change sets. And change sets, if you don't know, I'm a huge fan of change sets. It helps automate the workflow for publishing like beautifully. So I'm going to say um, we have another one inside publish.yaml. Now this is inside um, TS reset, but I'm going to copy and paste this over so we can get our publish workflow working too. So we get publish.yaml. Now that is, there's a lot going on here. So this is going to check out the repo. It's going to set up PNPM, going to like set up node, install from PNPM, and then it's going to either create a release pull request. I'll show you what that means. Uh, Maybe we won't actually get to that, but it's going to publish our stuff here and it's going to run pnpm run release. Well, at least we have humor. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not sure I do. I'm too tense. Um, so I'm going to run release and release is going to run the same thing I think as build, except it's also going to run change sets, change sets, publish. Is it change set publish or change set release? Oh, I need to look at it. bloody docs. My first time looking at docs. Okay, this is change sets, by the way. Super good. Uh, change sets pu publish, isn't it? Publish. Why don't you publish? Publish, 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 publish. Oh, for God's sake. Where's the CLI? Command line options. Uh, in it, add version, publish. Okay, it's publish. Good. Shouldn't I restrict engines? I don't think I care about engines. Not for this one. God, that's a good question though. I hadn't thought about doing that. Anything but looking at docs. Oh, it's awful. Okay, so publish, we've now got a PMPM run release, change set publish. What this is going to do is it's going to mean that I can say PMPM change set. And a change set is a kind of indication that something needs to change about the library or something that will change about the library. So I'm just going to say initial commit here. And initial commit, what that's going to do is it's basically going to like put in a markdown file into this um, into this change set directory, and it's basically going to say, okay, this is a like intent to deploy. And what that means is I can like if I commit this, I'll say, in fact, I need to do one more thing, which is inside my Zod message bus thing, I need to check something. Oh God. No, there's another PR. There's another PR. Add vtest config nvmrc. Ooh, this actually looks pretty useful. Define config. Test. Yes. Yes. Freaking love it. Conversation. Merge. Thank you. That was useful. That added a vtest.config.ts, if I'm not mistaken, and an nvmrc. Epic stuff. Very, very nice stuff. Um, 
<laughs> chat us chat gpt could do that actually yeah that might be useful um so i've got this working now and i'm going to oh yeah this is what i was going to do i was going to go into settings how many views we got by the way what are we at and i'm going to do actions i think i need to take the camera off um general no runners no this is fine sorry i just need to do something annoying okay annoying thing done now we can go into here and we can say uh, initial commit let's just say um, added change sets you can see I don't have particularly good commit stuff speed run yeah pog 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 am I using that right I watch quite a few streams but because I never stream I never know if I'm using like pog in the correct line well <laughs> yeah I mean that's pretty good that's pretty good. Uh, so what this means now is in our publish action, what this is going to do is because it sees a change set in there, it's going to create a new pull request that actually lets me like send something up to NPM and say like it basically lets you publish your package just by pressing a button, which is going to be super duper useful. Chrysler, <laughs> extremely good stuff, extremely good stuff. Pull requests, bam. We now have version packages um, PR here. And I can basically, by merging this pull request, this will send it live to NPM, hopefully. And this means that when this goes live, this basically like, or when this goes up, it runs a couple of actions here. So it's running our CI, which we know is gonna pass. And then it's running publish too. And when this CI completes, then we should have completed our second mission. We should have 0.01 published and you guys will be able to use it and pull it down and that might be actually very useful so give me a second oh, hmm. oh shit what happened what happened oh. private packages oh no there's a conflict option i've missed um because I don't want to publish this as a private package. I think it might be like, I have to say private false or something. And I think inside config change set, it's not access restricted, it's access public, I think. Um, maybe fix, sync changes. Okay, we'll try this again. Try this again, try this again, try this again. 282, peaked at 302. Yeah, 282 is crazy. Okay, we're so for those who've just joined us, we are hoping that this is going to pass because if this passes, then our speed run, which we need to complete in 90 minutes, is one step closer. Come on, come on, come on. VTS run. Come on, come on, here we go. Okay, 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 okay. okay. So we should be able to find now npmjs message bus total typescript so the message bus come on load why aren't you loading October revocation <laughs> come on come on where are you total typescript total God, I can't type. It's off message bus. Search. Wait, where's the thing? Where's the split? Split. Yes! Come on! Hype, hype, hype. Okay, we're 22 minutes in. We, have, we now have all of our infrastructure set up. We now need to actually figure out what the hell our, like, our API is going to be. Like, that's the next step. API built. Mm. Okay, but we got it. Epic. Okay, have you guys like done anything stupid? Do I have any pull requests to like go through? Added MIT license. Yes, look at this. Look at this. Is this under the right thing? MIT license. Lovely. Matthew Pocock got my full name as well. I'm not Matilda Pocock. I'm Matthew Pocock. Let's rock and roll. So merge pull requests. Thank you very much. License K -A -T. Split is fake. Version 0.02. Yeah, technically. Okay, 
So now we actually need to figure out like what we're building because currently the only thing that we're exporting from this is a function called hello, which console logs hello. So bonus points if you can actually get this working inside an app, this should work with like a Next.js app or something. You'll just be able to call hello from whatever. Um, but first PR didn't agree to that license. What's my other Have I messed something up? Because I thought I had a license MIT down here already. No, okay, we're fine. Yeah. No, I mean, deployment looks fine, I think. Deployment looks fine. Actions. Yeah, green lights all the way, baby. Something special happened today. I got green lights all the way. With no big red sign to stop me. No traffic jam delay. All right. Ah! So, what's next? We actually need to freaking, like... What? Did I? I didn't sign away my soul. Do this away. This isn't... No. Wait. Soul? Soul. No soul. We're good. This is a standard MIT license. <sighs> Let's get some features up in here. You're right. Okay, index.ts. So what I'm going to do is add like a playground inside here. Playground.ts. Oh yeah, I need to do a couple more things. I need to add npm ignore, and npm ignore is going to just ignore the source files, going to ignore change sets, going to ignore GitHub, um, going to ignore um, npm lock.yaml, tsconfig.json, vite.config.ts because currently uh, if we look at this we're actually shipping a load of code that we don't need to up to npm which is not great so oh no oh no there's no dist folder what the hell happened there's no dist folder oh okay um crap why wouldn't npm run build why is there no dist folder? Oh, did it? Ah, okay, cool. Why is there no dist folder? Oh, for God's sake, okay, right, we need to move fast. I think by specifying npm ignore, I'm actually going to be specifying the things that should be kept in. So I'm gonna say pmpm change set, and I'm gonna say fixed issue where dist folder was not being sent live. Okay, design change set. Yes, pmpm change set. I need to type slower so I can actually type successfully. Okay, bam. Fix, bam. So what I think that's going to do is I think that's going to <laughs> dist my dist folder. Yeah, um, is it's going to actually now, because it's going to automatically publish here because I actually like versioned it properly. So it's going to see now that a new version needs to be published and then it's going to publish it. This is great. Oh, what's, an, what's this new pull request? What have you guys been doing? Clean all comments of tsconfig. Ooh. 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 Me likey. No emit true. Wait, where's no emit true? Ooh. This is good, man. This is real good. Thank you. Another one in there. Chrysler. Chrysler. Look at these contributions from Chrysler. Wait, you're not in the contributors list. This is stupid GitHub. Wait, there you go. Where, where's the contributors list? You should be in there. Okay, well, GitHub is being weird. Um, Cannot cope with the pure speed. So I'm gonna need to check now. This should be 0.03 or it should be coming soon. Come on, son. Come on, son. 0.03, is this there? Yes, this is there, good. Yeah, I'm not loving this chaotic energy. I usually code in a much calmer mode than this, but I'm going to have to move fast. We now have a playground.ts, and playground.ts is going to say, this is going to be where we're sort of examining what actual API we're going to want here. This is like, so far, we are just like, um, we're just publishing an empty package to NPM. And I just need to really check what time it is. Okay, we have 60 minutes now to design API, to build the readme, to do any other steps, test passing, readme written. Okay. So I think I want something like this. I'm going to actually add Zod as a peer dependency and a dev dependency because uh, Zod 
and I'm going to add it as a peer dependency too. So Zod's in there, peer dep. Now peer dependency means that Zod is going to be installed with this, or it's going to be recommended that it's going to be installed. So ideally users would have Zod in here, and I think I'm going to accept anything above three, because we're not going to be using any crazy features, I don't think. So the playground that I want then, I'm going to say import from Zod. Now this is going to say, um, we're going to want to, yeah, I know, I, I'm, I cannot believe my CI luck, actually. This is working on my side. Um, I want to do something like this. I want to be able to say, um, const Zod message bus equals, or let's say message bus equals, it's basically going to be a, like, imagine a half, let's say like, declare const create okay okay hang on hang on i've had somewhat of a chaotic energy over the past 29 minutes and five seconds now is the time for calm because we need to start thinking about our api and if my hands are moving too fast for my brain, I won't be able to keep up. Whew. Let's get this bus on the move. Ah. Okay, so declare const create message bus. We're gonna just say this is any for now. And this will let us just sort of mess about with this. So I need some mana back. <laughs> Yeah, I really do. My mana is expended. I need to go back to base. Uh, so create message bus. That was a little cheeky League of Legends reference in there. Um, go back to the fountain. So create message bus. So this is going to be, I think, we're going to have something like events. And these events is going to be like, imagine that, so I built like a VS Code extension um, I've built a few in my career. And we're going to say, let's say we just have some events which are going to be like log in. And this is going to be a z.object. And that z.object is going to describe the properties that come along with log in. So we're going to have a username and we're going to have a password. Imagine that we have log out here. Then we're going to just say z.object. And in fact, when I was messing about with this API before, I was thinking that instead of, because these are always going to be objects, because the way that you would call this is you would say message bus.send. And then you would send log in and do it like this, basically. And you would also send, be able to send like message bus dot send log out and not need to pass this second parameter. That's kind of my idea. You think people in Britain just use diesel? I'm, I mean, I'm not like, I'm not following this conversation at all because there's way too many people in here. How many people are here? A ton I've got like a, can you see the cup of tea in there? It's like hardly in there. Hardly any left. Mm. Okay. Um, so I need to somehow create this API. Do we think this is a good API? Because I should be able to say like message bus. Actually, do I want to do this? Is that, a, well, that looks like X states, you think, John? 331 is insane. <laughs> Three, three, one people watching this. You're gonna watch a man fail because we've got 60 minutes to basically ship this entire API. Um, this is all your fault. It's the dregs. <sighs> okay. So I'm gonna try and get this working. So const create message bus. Um, like, because in order to send this, like the sender actually needs to do something. Or maybe the create message bus should actually uh, if I go back one step, like this is basically creating like some something where we store the messages on here. Um, yeah, it's just the tricks. Um, and we need to actually like create a sender out of this. So maybe we should be going const sender equals message bus dot create sender. And then inside here, we would basically have a handler which takes in an event 
which I'll just type as any for now. And then like, you know, does window.post message, for instance, and post message uh, event. Or in fact, we could even just sort of pass it window.post message. This would be really, really good for Electron apps, for um, Chrome extensions, for uh, VS Code extensions. Request response, emit and forget. Uh, emit and forget, I think. Um, I'm, I'm trying to create a message bus thing here. I am going to try getting this thing working because we're going to need some fancy TypeScript to get it to work, which I'm just going to whip through because I can do this stuff like I'm back of my hand. Um, and I kind of want to say message bus actor.send, but I don't want this to create an actor, let's say. I don't want it to be able to... I want to be able to this to say um let's actually think of a, like a more concrete use case because maybe we could stick that in the readme this is this is good so we've got to create message bus let's say we've got um a chrome window here and this chrome window what we're trying to do oh my god my cats are trying to get in too wait not chrome window not a chrome window what's a good example hello bandit I've got a cat here there's no time for cats. Um, so this Chrome window, what you want to send to it, let's say we've got a Chrome extension and we create the message bus. This would save your life in Electron. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I kind of hate window.post message. This is why I want to create this wrapper here. Okay, cool. We've got some good stuff happening in the comments. Um, the create sender should have a sender and a receiver. You should be able to plug in window.post message and window.event listener, right? Okay. This, I think, is not going to be the handler. You're right, though, because we need a handler. I think we need a sender, so like a function where we can create a sender. And then also const handler is going to be message bus dot create handler. And then inside here, we're going to have an event, and that's going to be the, the event here. And so handler, you can then like listen to it, essentially. So you'd be able to call window dot add event listener. Uh, message and then handler and that handler is that what I think it is this message event is I don't think it's assignable is it assignable event dot data no it's not assignable damn um sorry I'm I, I drifted off a bit there. Yeah, let's not forget about WebSockets. So yeah, yeah, WebSockets definitely important here. Um, I'm thinking WebSockets. I'm thinking Electron Apps. I'm thinking um, my cat's still here. Let me show you my cat. Uh, I'm thinking other stuff too. He's very skittish. He's a rescue. This is Bandit. He's got a brother called Patch. Who may be in imminently. <sighs> Speed run, but only singing. Yeah. Go light connection. Give me more. Give me more. Oh, hand yes. Hand load. Mm, I, yeah. That's the question, right? Like, that's an open question is should the handler unsubscribe or should it not? <sighs> okay. But I need to, I need to do this at the very least. So I need to type this. So let's say const create message bus is going to be a function. And this function, it's going to have t, which is going to extend a record string. And what's this tag? Log in. Z dot, uh, no, it's not going to be that. It's going to be. So log in. Uh, username z dot string, password z dot string. I need to examine const. Oh, yeah. Um, Sorry, I, I'm going to be in the tank for a second here. Object equals z.object. What does z.object take? z.object takes a zod raw shape. So I think I can just say z.zod raw shape here. And what that's going to do then is it's going to say, okay, opts is going to be events, and that's going to be uh, t. So then what's happening here? Create message bus. Wham. Oh, God's sake, I misspelled it. God's sake, I misspelled it. Okay, now Chrome extension is going to take void, but that is now capturing login username. Okay, that's good. So I want to take this now and I want to basically say, 
I want to say, okay, this is going to return some sort of event here. Now that event, let's say we have a type example equals, this is gonna be T and it's gonna extend the same thing as we have up here. We want to be able to take that and we want to transform that T into, yep, K and key of T. Basically we want to transform it into an event that looks kind of like this. So it'll be log in <clears throat> or log underscore in username string password string. It's going to be that. That's what we want. So the way that works then is we're going to say type is going to be K. And now if we put example in here, so we say example uh, t example equals example t like I'm sorry I know a lot of you folks are going to be like what the hell is he doing but I'm going to get that I promise create message bus so now what we have is we have oh shit it's not being prettified uh, I'm going to need a prettify helper nope nope uh, and this, so I can do this. Is that going to work? Should work. Uh, create message bus. Okay, good. So that what that Prettify helper did was it took something that was previously wrapped in something and then unwrapped it for us. So now we can see what login is doing. So now currently we're getting a type of login type login from this type. So you can think of this, it's kind of like we're testing an input and an output. We have an input here and this is the output that we're getting. What I want is I want to, if I add like log out onto here, uh, log out, and I just put an empty object there. What I want to see is I want to see um, basically type log in or type log out like this. That's what I want to see. So, but I'm not seeing that right now. I am seeing an object with the keys of log in and log out. I can index into this. I can say key of T. That's really nice. Now I'm going to get type login and type log out. And then I can go and, oh God, now no, here's the tricky bit. Because how do I transform the Zod string stuff into there? Okay, I look into um, z.zod object again. Let's look at that again. Where is it? Const object equals z. Okay, I'm losing my call a bit, but it's fine. We can get there. Okay, z.zod objects. Let's take a look inside this. z.zod object. Hello. So this one takes in the okay t, which extends zod raw shape, which is the thing that we're doing. So I can go and z.zod object tk. Wait, did that just work? No. Okay. Z dot schema. Uh, infer. Look at that, look at that, look at that. So this was the type I wanted. Login or username or string. Or password string. Or type logout. And look at that. TypeScript is working. Yes, please install Prettier. Um, please uh, add like a Prettier config or anything. I'm going to check, see if you guys put any more PRs. But great. We've got the first bit of magic working. That's epic. <sighs> I'm give myself a heart attack here. Tell TypeScript. Zod. Um, no. Zod message bus. Oh, yeah, it's not total TypeScript. It's under Matt Pocock, isn't it? Uh, yeah, here we go. Put three pull requests. Oh my god. Add initial readme. Ooh, hello, 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 hello. Yes, love it. Love it. It's in. Unless we've got any conflicts. Better npm ignore. All the files. Yep. Looks great. Looks great. Merge. I like that. That's really nice. Next, next, next. You guys have been so helpful with this. Oh, we've got two init readmes. Yep, doesn't matter whether it's readme.md. Uh, I'm going to cancel this one for the other one, but I like the effort. Close pull request. Um, and merge this one. This is good. 
we should probably like deploy this again so that folks sort of vaguely know what's going on. Yeah, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about the wizardry. You know, it comes with the territory, guys. It comes with the territory. Chat MPT. Wait, wow, what time are we on? Okay, okay, 43 minutes. And we've got the first part of our API done. That's bad. Um, so now, got our message bus. I'm going to change this example to um, maybe I need to put Prettify around this. Yeah. Oh no, maybe here actually. Ignore me, ignore me. Yeah. If I put Prettify around there and I remove it from there, then that's going to be good, I think. If we have a look at that. I know it's, it's not great, but it's fine. Okay, so what we need to do now, yeah, puffer, puffer smoke, wizard conjured up types. If you want to learn more about types, then you should look at, you know, you know the rest. So we've got ops.events. Now this means that we're like, what I want to do now is I want to say, okay, message bus .create sender. So create sender, what that's going to do is it's basically going to say, um, we need to return create sender. Now, inside create sender, we're going to accept a function, and that function for now is just going to return void. And create sender, what I should be able to do is pass window.post message. Now, I was expecting okay. What does window.post message actually do? What's its API? Message any target origin string. Yeah, um, I'm going to add some more crazy types here because what create sender is going to do is it's going to create an object where you can actually send to it. So this sender down here, bam, bam, let's actually do this. So create sender. Now this func, I'm going to have to be generic about this. So I'll say tfunk extends uh, args hmm, any array and then it returns any, and now this func is going to be inferred as t func. Now, what we can do is we can basically then return a function, and this example, let me change this example, because what this example actually does is it essentially says, um, this is going to be events config to discriminated union. And events config to discriminated union, that's going to go there. And we're going to say events as disco union, baby. Disco union. I love thinking about things as disco unions. I think I, I recently played Disco Elysium. Didn't finish it though, but God, it was good. So now funk. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, no, this can't be right. Okay. I was thinking that I, I would take create sender and I would take the thing that was passed in. And then I would basically say, yeah, okay, no, it, it, it isn't generic. That's fine. Um, so this needs to take, this func is going to tick. It's going to be this, going to return void. And it's going to take event, events as disco union. Ha, now you see why that was working. And it's going to return, um, it's going to return func. I think. Handler, sender, ah, sender. So what we can do now is we can now say, uh, yeah, I'm going to change this API a little bit. And let me just show you what we've just done. Yeah, I do want to, I do want to have multiple senders and you can with this API, I think, because you can create multiple different senders. Yeah, I think so. Uh, <laughs> join your local disco union. <laughs> Join your okay. Let me comment out some stuff because now this send function, just based on this message bus that we've created here, now this actually takes in a union of all the things that we want. So we can say send, and now we can say type login and password one two three, and then username. And look at that. If we remove username from this, now username will be gone from here too. And if we do log out instead of this, then it's not going to ask us to require anything else. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. 
Arizona is going to run. No, because I, um, okay, wouldn't it be better to merge create sender and create handler inside the create message bus options? No, I think I want to actually create like a builder pattern out of this because if you, what this means then is you can have one message bus which sort of sits globally and then on one side, let's say on the Chrome extension side, you would have, like, because on a Chrome extension, you have multiple different environments at once. You have the browser, and then you have the environment that the Chrome extension sits in. This means that both files could import from the same message bus, and they could both use the same message bus for sending stuff back and forth. So that means that you end up with a, um, like, a, a really cool API because it means that everything is type safe back and forth. You can have these different message buses sitting around. I'm not sure if message bus is the right name. Ugh, bugger it. Um, but what that means then is you have these different senders that actually have different functionality. So I'm not going to merge it into the same object. I'm going to use a, a builder pattern. What am I doing? I am trying to create a NPM library in like 90 minutes. We are this far through. We have not built our API yet. Um, Bus shouldn't care if you have a subscriber send it. Yes, it should be decoupled. Exactly. So we're doing pretty well. We've got a sender. Now then, let's create a handler. Uh, create handler. Um, this func, I think it's going to be the same thing, actually. And for now, I'll just return the func. Because this handler, yeah, like, protocol. Yeah, it is more like a protocol. I don't really, like, let's go create message protocol. It's sort of like a spec, right? Oh, you made a prettier PR. Let me check. Oh my gosh. Install, config, and run prettier. Let me check. There's a lot going on here. Oh, you ran prettier. I can't... Ah! Oh. Mm. Damn it. Wait, are these tabs? Are these spaces? I don't know what these are. Tab width. Tab width four. Tab width four? Tab width four? Goodbye. Chore, I pretty. It is a chore, isn't it? Print with a hundred? Tab with four? Tab with four? Print with a hundred? What? <laughs> what? This is just troll. Chohol. Okay, is this going to be better? Print with a hundred? Tab with two. He's got it. He's got it. Yes, Lint, I'll see. Yes, Lint. TSC. What? TypeScript ESLint parser? Nah. Uh, 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 no. No. Just prettier, please. I don't really. I mean, ESLint's fine, but I've got TypeScript. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm two. I'm two all the way. Tab with four. How dare you? How dare you, sir or madam? Okay. <laughs> so create a handler. Because, I mean, I guess this should create, like, it shouldn't create a handler, it should create a listener, right? Um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so let's say create listener. Um, okay. I like create message protocol. Folks, I like create message protocol. I think that's going to be the name of the sort of main entry point of the API. Do we agree? Create message protocol, it's cool. It sounds smart, it sounds smarter than it is. It sounds like it's using some cool terms and it sounds safe, you know what I mean? So, and we're starting to get a sense of what our API is going to be. So I'm gonna, like in a minute, we're gonna be writing tests and stuff. And while I'm writing tests, I think someone needs to be writing the readme. So can someone like, how many of us are in here by the way? I need to check, but how many of us are in here? Someone comment, like, create dived. Um, we, like, I need someone to be writing the readme. Can you volunteer to write the readme? And you're going to need to hang around, and you're, I'm going to point to you, and you say, write the readme now. You disagree? Oh, no. Sounds so professional. Yeah. Okay, good. Agree. I, 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 cool. Your messages are starting to roll into me. Let's freaking go. So, create message protocol. <sighs> Just rocking and rolling. 280? My gosh, man. No, I like the create. Um, I think it's ergonomic. I don't want it to be just 
message protocol. So we're going to say this is going to be create hand create listener. So create listener. What it's going to do is it's going to. God, I'm like. Hmm. Because a listener, you think actually like. Because what it kind of needs to do. No, I'm actually going to say create handler for this. Because if you think of create listener, what it does is it's actually going to be like listening in to something and going to be checking something out. Um, and it needs to like exist over a period of time. Whereas create handler sort of makes me think of, okay, this is going to be like a um, uh, something that... Huh. Something that just sort of like a reducer almost just takes the input and sort of you choose what to do with it. It's kind of like a new PR with uh, yes, Lint. So it's it's a little bit um, easier. Uh, certainly lighter for the API to do. Oh yeah, and tab width too good. Use tabs true. Use tabs true, eh? I mean, it's pretty. Who cares? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Bam. We're in. Merge. Good stuff, Johol. Johol. Okay. So I need, I need to pull this stuff down. I've just been messing about with stuff. Yeah. I thought that would happen. Uh, Git stash. Yeah. Sync changes. Please don't. Please don't make me do merge conflicts. Oh, there's merge conflicts. Oh, no. Oh no! Why did I accept both changes? No! No! What have I done? What have I done? Stage changes. No! Oh yeah, I added peer dependencies. I added salt to peer dependencies. Let me just sort this out. Oh no, it's done. It's fine. What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? What? What's going on? Pretty RC. Yeah, 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 yeah. It seems fine. Does it seem fine? What's happened? Send it a cleanup method. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So listener, that's that's my thinking for listener, is that I don't have to send the um uh uh the listener to it. What time are we on? Oh my god. 35 minutes left for crying out loud. We need to land on an API for this, and I think this is okay. So we've got, yeah, the thing that isn't working here, yeah, this handler then is basically just a function which takes in this stuff and you handle it from there. That's nice. So we've got to create handler and we've got to create sender. So this indicates that we need to be doing some sort of like checking in the inputs there. But for now, I'm happy with this API. So we need to stick this inside some more reasonable files because currently it's just inside a playground. Let's stick it in here for now. We need to import uh, from Zord. We need to get the Z into there. And I'm going to put this in some separate files now. We need to create message protocol.ts. We just stick this in here. So index.ts, create message protocol, stick it in there. Uh, let's put that there and let's add this import up here. Okay, uh, we're going to need a types.ts file. Types.ts, stick that in there. Uh, and then inside index.ts, I'm going to take all these fancy typings. I'm going to put that up there. So what we end up with is a little type like that. Is that doing anything? No, we're going to say import from Zod and then take the Z, stick it there. And I think we're good, but we just need to export all of this stuff. We're going to put it in index.ts. We're going to now get rid of all this crud and then stick that back in the playground. So that makes me happy. We'll sort out you in a minute. And then we're going to, oh no, I don't know. There's a cat. No, there's a cat. There's two cats. There's two cats beside me. Export from um, playground. No, not playground. What am I doing? Uh, create message protocol and types.ts. We're going to fix these imports by importing from the right spots. Then we're good to go. Who's got? Who's Montgomery Scott? <laughs> we're going to fix this, and then we're going to try running pmp and run ci. A 
Okay, good. Our CI is passing. That's good. That indicates to me. Oh, I didn't uh, merge. Um, sorry, folks. I've not been pushing stuff up. Um, I don't have to pet the cats. I don't have to, Raphael. I could. I spend a lot of time petting those cats. Um, okay, let's say pm pm run change set. Um, pm pm change set. Let's make it a minor because in a minor we like want to indicate that something has changed. Added creates message protocol APIs. Yes, my desired change set. I think we've got something pretty good here, you know. Um, added change set and create added basic frame of API. Look at this for commit message discipline. I've got some commit message discipline. I think. Um, we now need to ship this. So we need this PM PM change set version. Like a version pushed for the very first time. Oh, that was a bit pitchy. Pushed for the very first time. Like a version. Fill your repository next to mine. I think we can say the API is built. Oh, that took a while. 37 minutes to build the API. Good Lord. Okay, but this is good though. So we've got create message protocol working. This all seems to be working. Now it's time for tests. It's time for tests. <laughs> I've got commit message discipline. Come on, I do. You got any more PRs? Four PRs? Why are there four PRs? Oh, version packages. Okay, that's dead now because we don't need to worry about it. Because um, we just did the versions ourselves. Remove you now. <laughs> Stop it. I mean, I do agree, so I will merge this, yeah. Extremely silly. Close purge. Oh no, got to resolve conflicts. Resolve conflicts, son, and then I'll merge it. Um, this is good though. What else we got? Pull request, pull request. <laughs> Everyone's laying into this. Installation. Oh, you removed these. Why'd you remove this? Um, Wait, what 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 happened there? Oh. Why is that why is that diff so different? <sighs> Handle to receiver. Yeah, maybe send a receiver. I kind of dig that actually. Let me do that. Is there a song that I can sing to that one while I narrate this? Create receiver. Yeah, makes sense. I like it. Receiver. Receiver. I hardly know her. Handler. Sender. Oh, gosh. Okay. What did this this get most? Uh, info to package.json. What's info? Um, what do you want? Keywords. Oh, TypeScript. Ooh, yes, 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 yes. This is great. Thank you, Ronan Roo. Beautiful. We've got our API. Um, yeah, funk to handle it, probably. But I need to start writing some tests now. So I'm going to say pnpm uh, run dev. And I need to start scaffolding out the tests that I actually want to uh, check out. So index.test.ts. God, I'm starting to get hungry too. To call. How long do we have until we need to delete the repo? We have, okay, we have 28 minutes until we need to delete the repo. 1.0 published. I'm basically going to do that as soon as the readme is written. Receiver is better. I agree. Send a receiver. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I could send a receiver if I tried. Um, so I need to then say create message protocol. Um, what do you want? Okay, come on. We've got to see the, see the other cat. This is Patch. I know it's not the same cat. Looks very similar. Sometimes he'll let me do this too. Aww. Looking up at me plaintively. Can you hear the sound too? Maybe lunch break. I mean, it's like 6.20 here. It's like pancake day as well, so I'm desperate for some food. Yeah, I know. I haven't run pretty or on everything yet. I should probably do that, but I just can't be asked. Um, we'll get around to it. How many of you are here? 
for the folks who've just joined, we have uh, 28 minutes to ship something, and uh, we have a couple more steps to make. Yeah, the same colour, black and white, the brothers. And if we don't ship it in time, we have to delete everything we've done. So the entire course of my life will have been a waste. Let's get going. So we want it should create a type safe sender. That sender, what do you want? Oh no, don't fight, don't fight. They're fighting at the door. I should do. Um, yeah, let's just say to do for now. Thank you, Copilot. Um, yeah, should create a type safe receiver. Um, but I should describe this better. So it should should create a sender which uh, ensures messages passed are type safe. No, that's that's the same stuff. Should allow send should error if um sent message is uh, not the shape needed not the shape needed uh, does not match an event okay it should error if a pass if a sent message matches an event god Writing freaking test descriptions is the worst. Should, if a received message matches an event. Ah, you know what, this is good though. Should error, because there's kind of not much here, right? If a does not matches match an event. I think we're good. Invalid format? Uh, yeah, I, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this. Let's ship it. Um, okay, so we need to create a message protocol. The message protocol is going to be message protocol. Oh god, just my singing voice is just shot. Um, create message protocol. We need to import that. We need to say events inside here. God, this is a nice API. Z. No, it's not an object. It's just going to be. Yeah, we're going to say username string. No, username z dot string, and we need to grab z from zod. Password, go there. Log out, go there. Empty object. This is real nice, you know. Oh, yeah, it does not match an event. Yeah. Not. Um, okay. So now, message protocol. What we can do is we can create a sender and a receiver up here. Sender equals message protocol creates sender. Ooh, and we can go vtest.fm, I guess. No, but then we need to kind of create it per test, I think. So because we need to keep track of the um, calls to that function. So we can say vtest.fn const um, sender. It's going to be this. No! Test sender. Uh, test sender. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, missed the word match in the last test. Does not an event. It does not match. Match an event. Thank you. Um, you can pass a sent message match an event. Okay, um, I'm gonna scaffold this as well, and I'm going to then call sender with type login, and then um, ts expect error. If you don't know what this directive does, it basically says to TypeScript, okay, we should expect an error here. This is good because it's testing our types as well as a runtime stuff. So. We should now expect, and I always forget the API for this. Um, I think this, and then it's like, I don't know, this needs to go there now. And it's something like to throw, and let's see what's happening. Ooh, oh, it expected the function to throw an error, and it didn't. Cypher, what's a cypher? My Disney, <laughs> what's my Disney movie villain accent? What is this? It's just my voice. It's just my voice, mate. Ah, oh, man. And then I guess we should say expect um, test sender not to have been called. Yep, that's good. Okay, we, this is good. 
red green refactor looking for this directive ah good you learned something we don't have time for you to learn something unfortunately because i need to be actually doing stuff so i can say sender and i can just say sender uh password uh password and let's say username username perfect now we can say expect test sender to have been called with and we can say type login password password username username oh it's very nice so now we're actually getting a passing test if we look at it so we've got it dot skip i'm just going to say it dot skip again um yeah okay so actually this this test is passing because we're actually like creating this sender and we've got the test sender which is a mock function we're checking if the mock function has been called and if the mock function has been called we expect it to be called with a certain thing a certain object so this one's working this one's not working because zod isn't involved yet so we need to actually go into create sender and what we need to do is we need to return a funk and this funk is going to take an event, which is events as disco union. Disco union, baby. Yeah. And the event schema is going to be this. What? Yes, it does. Um, TypeScript, I know what I'm about. I know that this always contains a type. Oh, no. It's not a real shape. There's a bug. There's a bug. There's a bug, there's a bug, there's a bug in our API, which is you can specify type z.string here. That's not good. We do not want that. We want that type to be never. Yeah, okay, to have been called times, yep. Yeah. Test sender to have been called once. That's nice. That's a bug though, because we need to somehow like look inside this type and omit the type from it. Oh. oh dear. So can I do this? Can I like just say like omit type? I know that's pretty weird. Okay, you're still not happy. Oh, this is not a schema though, is it? Because I know that it event has a type on it. Yeah, okay, okay, so I need to call like dot object. I'm not sure that's good though, because we're sort of like we whenever the whenever the sender is called, we're now like uh, calling z to object, so reinstantiating that function. But holy cow, I've got to, I've got 19 minutes left. 19 minutes left. As any, when you came and you gave me as any, then I sent you away, oh any. What? Oh no, I'm put it around the wrong one. You kiss me and stop me from shaking. So event schema, that's good. Um, event schema dot pass event and then inside here I will call this sender now we actually end up sending the event eh oh yeah and we want to actually send the past version of the event yeah that's good events giving a past event disco union could be stench oh are you joking oh I know why that's happening oh god it's kind of niche though it's because it extends so it needs to extend type string there we go. Event schema dot pass this disco union. No, this is fine. This is going to be an event as disco union. So we're happy. Yeah, I think we're happy. Okay. Now what's happening with the types? Okay. So it is erroring. Oh. 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 Hang on. Oh. Oh, yeah, don't do this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. This is this is this is nuts. Um, oh, I know. I know. Um, I didn't know what the API was, Joel. So I was just messing about. OK, sender, pass event. Um, the reason this is happening is because we don't actually have 
So it should be z.object with this and type is z.literal event.type. So now the test should be passing. Okay, good. We got halfway done. Now we go back to test.ts. Now the reason that's working is because the one that like this wasn't working before because I was just using um, basically if we open this up to here, open the test file, the reason this wasn't working is that we were basically only passing this into the schema. Whereas what we needed to do was basically add a type, which is z.literal event type. And I think I might, can I get rid of this as as well? No, I can't. <laughs> oh, well. Um, oh, epic, 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 epic. Okay, this is good. Um, so now our tests are passing. Now we just need to handle the handler. Read me. It's, it's read me time. It's read me time. Um, what tuple? Type is not part of the schema. Uh, uh, uh. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Yeah, I know. Well, bots are here. Listen, I don't, I, I don't have time to deal with the bots. Okay, we need to instantiate these now. So this then, we need to say const blah, blah, blah. Hmm. I mean... Now I think about it, these are sort of the same thing, right? Like handler and sender are the same thing. If you think about it, like I'm just going to end up writing this exact same code again, because sure, receiver, it's going to basically just be a function that receives one of these events and then does something with it. So that's what we're doing. We're just creating handlers. Sender and receiver doesn't make sense. It's just a handler. I think I just simplified our API. And simplified API means less code. Get out. Create handler. Create handler. message dry yeah 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 why would I repeat myself why create endpoint create endpoint mm. I think handler is just a function it's just a type safe function yeah middleware nah mm. I'm still alive what are you talking about um okay create message protocol I, th I mean uh that's gone create message protocol I can pmpm change that. Wait, let me let me pull. Uh, let me check your PRs. Anyone PRing? Four pull requests. For God's sake! Oh my God! Stop! Stop moaning about tabs and spaces. Stop it! Stop it! Are you, is this pretty or ignore? No! Stop it! Okay, use tabs faults. Fine. Fine, but I. I Oh, tabs of space is rubbish. Husky? I know I don't want pre-commit hooks, do I? Lint staged? Pretty. Oh, this makes sense, but I don't have time. This makes sense. I mean, I'm going to have to delete all these PRs if we don't finish. So I'm, I'm, are there any more? Any more? Any more? Remove these tabs. Is this ready to merge? I this is just one file change. <laughs> these freaking PRs, man. Yeah, go on then. Let's merge. Okay, 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 okay. Um, I can pull, that should be fine. I'll just go in and save all my files to make sure that I've got the tabs working. There you go, now all that's changed. Types.ts, working. Um, PNPM change set. Let's add a change set. This is gonna be a patch version. It's going to say implemented functionality with Zod. Desired change set, done. Um, <sighs> completed work, no? <laughs> Commit message discipline. Um, okay, 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 okay. Um, wait, but those, that's test passing, isn't it? I need to probably ship, don't I? But that's test passing. So, okay, we've got our action. Oh, I've got to say, why did I name it that? That's stupid. Wait, why is, why is things breaking? 
Is the build broken? I didn't realize it. Is there something in Playground that's not working? Playground.ts? I forgot to say, yeah, that's going to show up. Okay, create handler. Ah, oh, damn it. Uh, fixed build. Oh, go away. Look, 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 look. Look. I was young and I needed to ship. And commit messages are just toilet paper. They just go off into the ether. Who cares about commit messages? Really? Really? Hmm. <sighs> no, time's not up. Time's not up. Look, 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 look. Uh, streaming with face. Time is not up. We have... Oh my god, 12 minutes. Okay. So we've got to... Like, tests are passing now. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, even those tests pass. That's good. Okay, fix the build. We've now got... Should have a pull request to merge this in. Version packages. Let's merge it in. Yeah, here we go. This is going to send it live. This is going to be our 0.1.1 release. Nice. How to receive stuff now. Yeah, only doing sending. Um, I mean, this is just a handler, right? So now we need to come up with something for the version because the tests are passing. That means we can do a split. That means we've got to write the readme. That means we've got a 1.0.0 published. Okay. So we've got a handler. Now this hand, now in order to figure out like the right way to express this, um, yeah, we've got to change that. Um, in order to figure out the right way to express this, we need to figure out the use case. What is the actual use case for this? Because, and like, how do you explain it? And this is like where my brain starts to fall apart. Because, my use cases for this are like pretty niche. This Zod message bus thing that we've created. Like, how do you actually explain it? Because you're talking about creating a message protocol that lets you send between different um, different environments. So I guess we need several examples. We need one for like web sockets. <laughs> yeah, one for web sockets. Thank you, Vigo. Uh, you could do one for what, like a Chrome extension? Do one for a VS Code extension? Do one for Electron apps? But I, I haven't built an Electron app. I just know that it's good for an Electron app. Okay. Yeah, an ad event listener and post message. Broker is a good name, isn't it? Zod Broker. I think I'm... I think our package name is wrong, don't you? It's not a message bus anymore. It's like a message protocol. Like we don't have, yeah, we need to redeploy this. So package.json, Zod message bus. Uh, let's get rid of all the buses. Buses are gone. Buses are out. What's in? Um, oh, hang on. Stream of my face. Zod message bus protocol. Message, Zod broker. Broker, I hardly knew it. Old message protocol. Let's do it. PMPM PM run change set. And it should just work, I think, actually. So changed name to Zod message protocol. Design change set, yes. Um, done. Oh, wait, I didn't add a commitment. <laughs> For God's sake, don't say it's frozen now. Oh, no, 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 go away. I just didn't add a commit message. That's how far I've gone. Uh, changed name to Zod message protocol. Good. Um, Zod transport is good. God, we're going to get lost here though. How long have we got left? Eight minutes. Okay. So I'm going to go in the playground. Um, I actually like don't know how to use the um, native WebSocket API, which is really troubling me. Um, because I've sort of never had a cause to. I always use like a wrapper, but now I can't even remember what wrappers I've used because the previous wrappers I've used were like GraphQL subscriptions, which just basically let you like talk to the server and the GraphQL thing just handles it all for you. So, and that handles all of the message passing as well. Um, oh, yeah, I love that I've been writing about message, commit messages, and the thing that we're doing is like safe messaging. Um, so, okay then. 
that's just really getting to me now. We need to just start. Action before motivation. Oh, readme already exists. Of course, someone scaffolded it for you. Zod message bus, Zod message protocol. Let me change this to Zod message protocol. Was that even the name that we came up with? I think it was Zod message protocol. Yes, Zod message protocol um, gives you, let's stick this up here. Let's do a little preview window so we can see what we're doing. Um, uh, type safe gives you type safe access. I mean, I just need to check the PRs because if someone's like done something for this already, then we're in a really good spot. So I should pass version packages. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, this is good because we can deploy this. No one's writing the readme. Why aren't you writing the readme? Yeah, I can't relax. Um, okay, okay. I'm actually just going to put this on here because woo. Wait, I need to. I need to take this. Yeah. How do I do this? Oh, crap. Okay, there we go. This is fine. Six minutes. Six minutes for God's sake. Um, yes, this is good. Okay, uh, installation gives you type safe access between uh, message passing between two different environments. Go to the playground. Grab this, and then we can say create handler. So let's say we've got like three files here. Let's say we've got um, uh, protocol.ts here. Okay, what was that? Don't know what that was. Um, we've got a message bus here. So this is good. We can see it on the right hand side too. Um, protocol.ts. This creates the protocol. And now that protocol, if I just sort of like uh, nip over to the playground as well, let's open that too. Playground. Um, and let's say we create a sender. No, no. Um, so let's say we have environment. Ah, okay. Two different iframes. Two different iframes. Yeah. Runtime safety. Um, type safe message passing using Zod between two different environments. Okay, so now what we would have is like iframe.ts, let's say, where what we do is we create a const receiver equals protocol dots. Um, okay, let me go back to the playground because I, I need my autocomplete to get this done. Um, protocol to create handler. So this is inside iframe.ts, and this would be like send to parent. So this means you create a handler and you basically say window dot iframe. No, 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 no. Uh, window dot post message. Yeah, window dot parent post message. That's so simple. So now that just sends the parent and then we say const receive from parent. And actually, parent handler. No, 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 no. no. Um, const receive window dot add event listener message and we're now going to say um oh, we probably need to just add like a pass function here don't we like in create message protocol we need just the ability to just pass it oh god oh god no there's more coding to write no we can't do that we can't do that we can't offer that well that'll be version two um we go event and then we say um Protocol dot create handler. Um, no, we need to call that. So now we can have a const handler equals protocol dot create handler, and then I guess oh god, there's more API options sort of coming to me. Why didn't I do this earlier? Um, we just console log the event, and we just say handler event dot data. Okay, okay. Um, handle parent event. Uh, handle parent event. So this then is basically the idea. Um, and you have parent.ts. And then what you can do is you can say const send a child. Const iframe. We're getting somewhere. Equals document dot create no, not create element. Uh, get element uh, by ID. Um, my iframe. Then you say um, no, uh, send const <gasps> Send to uh, child. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, iframe. Content window? 
Why? 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 No. What's the API for this? How do you send? How do you send messages to a child iframe? How do you send messages to a child iframe? Help me. Help me. I've got two minutes. Oh God! I need to check MDN. the content window. Content window. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. That's fine, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it doesn't know it's an iframe. Of course. Uh, uh, wait, is that generic? Is that generic? No, it's not generic. So uh, query selector. Um, and if I do iframe, then it works. Yes, it works, doesn't it? Yes, it works. Brilliant. It doesn't know it's an iframe. Okay, this is going in the readme. Readme.md. Um, okay, God, we need to deploy this as well. Um, readme.md. Uh, type save function. Type save sender. Save receiver. I, I don't think I need this. I don't think I need the parent. Oh my god. I've got a spam caller. Go away, go away, go away. Ship read me. Um, playground. I don't want any changes to it. Or do I want changes to it? Uh, I, as long as they're type safe, that's good. Ship the read me. Uh, sync changes. Now we need to go back to the package.json. We need to say pmpm run change set. We're going to ship a major version. No, pmpm change set. And I need to ship a major. Major is going to be uh, yes, 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 yes. Um, <sighs> Desired change set. True. Yes. Healthy turkey's bean. What the frick is this? Um, read me. I'm just going to copy the read me in there. Because, you know, that's good. That's good practice, right? Um, Give you time to say messaging. Uh, don't want... Uh, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, what time is it? What time is it? How long? How long? How long? Damn. I really thought we were going to do that. I thought we were going to get it. My blood pressure. Come on, let's do it. Let's kill the repo. CD upper directory. Todd message bus. Any last words? Oh, in fact, this isn't the final step. Get rid of this. All gone. It's in the bin. Um, let's um, let's go now to God. Where are we even? Yeah, settings. Danger zone. Let's delete this repository. We are gathered here today to celebrate the life of Zod message bus, nay, Zod message protocol. It's been um, an extraordinary journey. 90 minutes of pure 
frenetic hell. And thank you all for your wonderful PRs and joining me in this journey. Let me put my glasses on. So, time to pay your respects. I will not be accepting forks. What a ride. <laughs> no. <sighs> ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. Something, something. I do understand the consequences. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> for God's sake. Oh, hang on, I think I can use get up mobile for this. Oh my god. It's an emotional moment. I've got a freaking two factor authenticate. This is stupid. <laughs> oh, what's going on even? God, my notifications are just a mess. And I'll use, use my password. My nerves are shut. Oh, incorrect password, for God's sake. Look. <sighs> All right. Yeah, I guess can't unpublish on NPM, but I, I mean, I don't think I've put anything useful up here, do I? Can I not? I guess I can make it private. <laughs> oh, hello. Once you delete this package, you will lose access to it. Please be certain. I'm certain. Yep, here we go. Deletion request received. <sighs> All right. Well, this was pretty fun, actually. <laughs> Didn't expect it to end this way. I expected us to, like, roar onto Twitter with our brand new, wonderful library. I still think it's quite a good idea for a library. I still wasn't perfectly happy with the API. Um, but we shipped it to NPM. We did everything except write the freaking readme. Oh, my gosh. But thank you so much for hanging out. I'm going to quit the stream. Uh, if you like this shenanigans, then you should uh, check out my Total TypeScript course. It's good. I put a lot more time into it than I did was able to for this. Uh, I've been working on it for like the last four months or something. It's time to go and see the cats and um, see what's happening. I'm going to go and eat some pancakes. I deleted your start. I know I deleted all your PRs, all your tab width. Uh, I blame the Prettier Config PRs. I will be doing this. Um, not, I'm not going to do, um, I'm not going to do this again because this was stressful, but next Tuesday, at the same time, I'm going to be streaming about the great debates in TypeScript. I'm going to be streaming about types versus interfaces, enums versus string unions. Um, I can't remember, loads of other stuff as well. I've got a list somewhere. Um, thank you so much for joining along. Let's finish it there. Yep, session is recorded, don't you worry. I want to see the code as well. I thought we did a pretty good job there. Just 90 minutes of my work down the drain. Lemon and sugar is, is the devil's work. I really hate pancakes in general, but if you smother it with like chocolate and stuff, it's great. Return types or not, yeah, that's a good one. That's a great one. I'm not doing tabs versus... We had enough tabs versus spaces. I think I actually do blame the tabs versus spaces. Ah, uh, yeah, you should check my output if you don't like enums. Talk about Tailwind? Nah. Nah. You should check out Simon Vrakliotis' course on Tailwind. All right. Let's say goodnight. Thanks, guys. Lasses, ladies, friends, non-binary pals, all of you.